Dynamic plus lowering springs in this box. See what we're working with? You'll see a lot of places to order your parts from, but if you enjoy this content, the best way to support the channel at no additional cost to you is just purchasing your parts from Karma Speed. We work with all these people that make these awesome parts. They ship it just as they would if you ordered direct from them, except they let us earn a little bit alongside of them as like a wholesale account. They ship it straight from them. It gets to you quick. All the warranties and every other detail, it's the same with the manufacturer. So 034, they're just regular car dudes making cool parts. And that's why we love them. These these have a nice gray color to them. Let's get you up close here. They have some 034 Motorsport branding on them. Nice gray color. This looks really good. Sometimes you have blues and things like that. So that looks like a rear, if I had to guess. This looks like the front. But these should drop the car 0.9 inches front and rear. So the front will be a little lower to have like a nice, not reverse rake, but like a forward rake. So it's, that's what you want. Let's talk about the details on these springs. Who makes these? 034 is Audi enthusiasts, independent thinkers, independent doers that make awesome parts. And they took their car to the track, figured out what they liked and didn't like, made springs, did testing, figure out which is the best of both worlds, and this is it. The goal is to make a spring setup that works well with the stock dampers. That's smooth, can take advantage of how the suspension can get stiffer or softer with the active dampening with different setups, like a car like this that has technology. To do that, you would think that the spring would be just shorter, but it's actually, when it's sitting with weight on it, it actually compresses and stacks differently. So when you put it on, they're close to the same as factory springs, but they compress differently and stack. Underweight, 0.9 inch lowering of the front and the rear. So you don't have a reverse rake. The rear is not gonna be lower unless you got a bunch of stuff in the back. So the front is gonna be slightly lower to have a positive rake that we like. That attack stance, the more aggressive look. And what are we overall looking for? Just a more planted car with these springs than before. It's gonna handle well in corners. It's gonna be comfortable on the road still. Everything was kept in mind and made in the USA for these springs with all those things in mind. Does it need to be expanded on more than that? It's just springs, absolutely not. It's simple, lower, comfortable, handles well, less body roll. Let's just get straight to it, install these and enjoy them. It's time to wrench. These things, I'll leave a link in the description, are unreal. This is also one of the easiest cars to put on the lift I've ever had. You know what this means. I just finished up the passenger side. It went well. You can see the gray 034 spring right there. What I did, take out this plastic clip, this plastic clip, took out the lower shock bolt. And then I took out this bolt right here. Then I used two pull jacks right here, which could be jacks on the ground if you're doing this on the ground. It was actually really easy that way, but Sean was 034 was saying to take out this subframe bolt, this and lower it and this one and this one and basically lower the whole subframe down to where it's barely hanging on by a couple threads and then you can literally pull this out super easy sean i appreciate the offer and the idea and the tech tip i'm gonna leave that for the viewers to let me know if that's easier because i had a really easy time doing it this way so let me walk you through each step my way plastic clip tool pop it in here these are simple, just like any interior body panel, but these are a little thicker. So they last longer, they take pressure better. And this should just snap off, set it aside. That's an 18 mil. So I'm gonna take a big wrench, get some leverage. Yeah, that's free. The other side is 18 as well. So I'm gonna put that on there, get my gun. Bada bing, bada boo. Throw the nut on just a little bit. Get the head flat on there. Flat side of a hammer. Swack that. Rest of the way off. Tap, 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 tap. And then what I'm gonna do is take my gun on the back side.
I just pull it out with a little bit of persuasion. I'm gonna put this nut on here so I don't lose it. The fun part. Okay, next step. Let's focus in here, class. Paint marker, Amazon links, always. So I don't need to mark the bolt. I need to mark this camera adjustment washer. That's all I need. I'm not gonna do more. I did that last time, I'm not gonna do it again. A 21 millimeter will fit on this. Ooh, that boy is tight. Before we go any further, we need to respect this. This is loaded right now. So it wants to shoot down. So if you're doing this on the ground, get a jack underneath here. Specifically, if you could slide it on here, if you have low profile, hold it here. So that when it wants to come down, it has something to hold it. I'm gonna get my pole jacks. Anytime you see me one of these, but you're working on the ground, think about a jack, a floor jack. Pole jack, floor jack, don't matter. I wanna put enough pressure on it to where I know it's gonna stay right here. So on the other side of this, the bolt is a 18. So I'm gonna have that there. And then I'm gonna take my 21 millimeter and just work it off. Okay, I'm gonna leave that on there and get my hammer out. Take the camber adjustment washer. Now this is where most people panic. But I want to figure out how do I get and use my jack and my tools to my advantage to take pressure off of this thing. So I'm going to put pressure up on the top right here. Okay, I feel like it's getting there. Is this bolt going to hit the exhaust, bruh? Oh no. Please say. Please no. Please no. The other side wasn't like this. Maybe this is why I should have listened to Sean. But I'm going to run this out. This bolt is really long. I don't know about this. So it's walking out. It really likes to be threaded out because this thing's like really thick threads. Whoa, we're gonna be cutting it close with this exhaust. I'm almost out of space. I already went to the gym. It's arm day again. This is working on cars 101 right here. One bolt takes 80% of the time. All right, this thing is just not wanting to come out. So, let's do this. Need some pressure to pull it out. So let's apply some force. Ah, arms are burning. There we go. Threads still intact. Let's come back over here. Very careful. Ready? Then get this out of the way. Spring comes out pretty easily. This top hat one, just push it up in here, see if it'll stay. Yes, sir. The bottom one, take some force, press it off. This little nipple right here goes in the control arm only in one spot, which is nice. The top one we don't gotta worry about. There really is no alignment. It's only an impression. This is actually where 034 goes hard, is I texted Sean over there, and I was like, Sean, why does the bottom line up, but the top doesn't? He's like, he sent me the webpage right away with the screenshot. To have it adjust and put it on screen. Installation tip or whatever. The upper soft guy between the chassis and the spring that goes here is just an impression of the old spring. It's not meant to line up. So just center this, this has to line up, center this, that's it. It's not gonna line up perfect, it's, that's how it's supposed to be. See, I would have known that if I looked at the webpage, but 034 goes so hard, I don't even think to look at that with companies. They're just regular guys doing it and making the notes for us. The playbook is there. So now, before I ever ask a question, I'm gonna look on the webpage beforehand. So I'm gonna thread the needle, keeping my nipple in place. Like that, let me get the top one. Top one looks good, bottom one looks good, cool. All right, reverse order. This is where things get real interesting. But we got this. It's all about whether it's your floor jack or your pole jack, putting pressure on the right spot. So that's about there. Something I wanna show you really quick is this bolt that slides through here that has an alignment camber adjustment washer. So look at this bolt with me. There's a ridge. The washer, you see that? Look at this. It only goes one way. So when you're putting this specific bolt back in, right, you wanna make sure that you align your marker. So these things are now aligned. Now when it's in there, you're gonna slide this through, 
slide this on and then this thing is not going to be in the right adjustment you need to get it to the marker so how do you get this to line up with your other mark you put a wrench here and you twist because as you twist this left side it turns the washer on the other side so don't fight it we'll get there but just know that that's how that works this is where it gets interesting pry bars pry bars pry bars if you don't have a kit of three of these i'll leave it in the description absolute necessity in life if you're ever going to work on a car they're not that expensive so i'm gonna kind of get this going oh oh i'm having great oh we're already ahead fam see it ain't that bad it's all about where you lined it up all right so i'm gonna go up with it until i see this side lined up okay that looks beautiful so let's see if i can whack them all ain't going nowhere nothing not a zilch okay this is where a bff comes into play power ratchet saves me time and energy let's see if we can get a rip on this thing ain't happening can't fit it love that okay so i'm gonna get my ratcheting wrench my 18 mil on this side i'm gonna watch to see if it comes through this side okay i need to lower it a little bit okay it's coming through slowly but surely i should be able to throw my power ratchet on soon and try now come on not bad not bad okay let's throw this on can't get a thread on it yet so what i'm gonna do since this is, won't move i want to pull it through this i'd like to yeah let's do that all right now that's just pulling it through nice and easy let's get almost all the way to the end okay the other side's spinning i need to get a wrench 18 mil on the back side all right then we just hang out with each other for a bit I'm just gonna go until this camera adjustment bolt is flush over here. Might take a bit. Okay. Now I wanna take this off. Okay, camera adjustment, washer. Yep, that's right. Toss this back on. Pick up where we left off. Let's go ahead and line up these lines. It's almost there. Okay, right there, I'm lined up. I'm gonna hold the back side and monitor it to make sure that the front right here that we're looking at stays. Okay, it just went out of alignment, then I adjust the back side. Just hold it right here and keep on tightening. All right, as I tighten, it's important to hold the back side. Okay, so now I'm gonna lower this and wait for this to line up. I can push it. Boom, that's lined up. It's not on the back side. Pry bar clock, just use it to align it. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch extension. I can go through this side, use it to as an alignment tool. Perfect, I'm able to push on it just enough. Now I can go with my bolt for the back side and use this as a way to push it through. So I don't mess up the threads with the hammer on the other side. I'm gonna take my drill. Just kidding, it doesn't work on that. Gotta get the power ratchet. I wanna twist it through. Oh, the beauty of a power ratchet. One more step. Walk these in. Then we're gonna give them a nice dump. Done. Done. It's the next day. I've just finished up the driver's side after last night and this morning. I did struggle, but I struggled so you don't have to, because that's what I like to do, is help you out and help you build confidence in the garage. So, with that in mind, let's tackle the passenger side and make light work of it. We're gonna start under the hood. First thing you wanna do is this rubber piece right here. You're gonna pull it back. That way you have access and this will flap a little bit. We have a brace here, 13 millimeter. Pull that out. Then lift this up. Inside here, get the 13 millimeter. I need the longer extension. There's a nut inside here. Really simple. I really just did that. Okay, let me get a magnet. Don't panic. Found it. Don't panic. This is key. I have one, two, three, four magnets handy at any given moment. Because you just never know when you're going to do something stupid like that description absolute must look how much time that saved me i'm gonna set this nut in my bolster right next to that stay organized these are some common wrenches that i'm using if you don't have one of these bolsters this is a game changer you can get them from karma speed super cool product 
Next piece of the puzzle under the hood is there's a little black cover. You're just gonna pull the center part of it up. I have a O-ring seal tool. Man, I could write a love story about me and this thing. You're just gonna pull up ever so slightly on this white outer part. And I'm just left side, right side, left side, right side, just barely wiggling it until this plug can come out of the top of the actual strut itself. That's for your active dampening and whatnot. Now we're gonna get 13 millimeters, loosen those. Three top hat bolts. Dang, gotta break them loose by hand. That's when I get the mid-sized ratchet for a little more leverage. Okay, those are loose. Save some energy, pop back over here. Not gonna take them out all the way till the end. That is it for up top. So our multi-link up here, I'm gonna take it loose. 16 millimeter on both sides, wrench it on both sides. Okay, I don't wanna do that any longer than I have to. Kind of help push that through. And then those should pop out and you can pull this bolt out. You can see it's wet from me spraying it with penetrating lube last night. So all these bolts that we're about to touch, I already sprayed PB Blaster on. Next thing I'm choosing to do is put a 16 millimeter wrench on both sides of the actual strut. And get this bolt all the way out. So I'm just gonna leave this bolt in here loose. Then we're gonna take and open that up a little bit when we need it. Next up, if we move around to this side, I wanna remove the lower end link bolt that's attached to the sway bar. 16 mil. That's out. Pull that bolt out. The last step to get movement to get the whole strut to fall down is removing the bottom of the fork right here. So it's 18 millimeter. So I'm gonna go on the back side, there's a nut over here. All right, cool. You'll see some play here. So the only thing really keeping this thing up right now are those bolts up top. Before we lower it, I'm gonna take a quarter drive ratchet with a little extension and I'm going to turn it halfway to expand that piece and then it's already sliding off the bottom because we sprayed PB Blaster on it last night before I even started working. Everything's on that Amazon list, like all these little things. I'll make sure for you. Now we're ready to lower it. Get my 13 mil handy. I'm gonna take off two bolts right away. Leave one in. Okay, kind of support it. Get my bolt somewhere, I'm not gonna lose it. Pop down here, see if I can wiggle this thing out. Okay, my spreader came out, so I need to open this up again. Okay, voila. Do not forget to put this plastic piece back on before you slide this back in here. Set my tools down. Put my bolt and my bolster with the other ones. Let's go inside the garage. Welcome to the danger zone. Just kidding, it ain't that big of a deal. So, McPherson spring compressors, everyone gets scared of them. You can buy them with the Amazon list. You can get them from O'Reilly's for free with their rental program. They put a hold on your card. If you don't bring them back, they charge you. If you bring them back, it's free. Then I have a 7 8 oxygen sensor socket makeshift. Then we're gonna use one of these Allen keys makeshift. I'll walk you through the proper tools when we get there, but I don't have them, but you can buy them ahead of time if you want. So I'm just gonna put this in my vise. This could be a table, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the same luxuries that I do to do this. So I wanna figure out how to safely and effectively compress the spring. So that one can go there. Preferably I like to have one on each side. See like it's gonna be kind of weird, but this will work. I'm gonna do it like this. These will be really close to each other, but that's fine. Doesn't take much. So these are a 19 millimeter on here. Let me go get that. So I'm just gonna kinda get these started. I have plastic guards on this vise, and I'm not putting that much pressure on it to get it started. I'm about to put it on the bench. Yeah, so like I can move this, it's not under load anymore, then you're safe. You don't need to compress it a ton. So now, take off the plastic cover 
I gotta get you on the other side over here. Before this ghetto method, you have like what's called pass-through sockets. And so, see what's going on here? You have a hole through it. So imagine what the move is, you put this on here, then you stick like a triple square or a Allen key through the center, and then you can do both at the same time. This kit I have, like most out there you can get at the store real easily, only go up to 19 millimeter. This is a 21 millimeter nut, so kind of screwed. So that's why we have to do the getaway, but that's why I'm leaving the 21 millimeter pass through and a kit that's better than this. I'm gonna order it. I don't, I don't need it now because I'm finishing this the getaway, but this is the makeshift. Wow. So what's going on? is there's a triple square here, which I have, but it doesn't work with this setup. But an eight millimeter Allen, a little bit more common of a tool, I can get this oxygen sensor socket on here, and then I can slide this eight mil in here and shimmy it in. With struts, I always like to see if I can get lucky with the top hat. So before I do anything, I'm gonna throw the right socket on there, see if I can get any progress. Probably won't, it'll probably spin. So like now it's just, spinning in there. So this is where this comes into play. And so these two, we gotta break this nut loose on the outside of it. So I'm gonna get this in here and I'm gonna decide what I wanna turn. So I'm gonna shimmy this eight in here. Yeah, I got grip. Now I'm gonna get a wrench on the end of this socket. Now I'm gonna push just a little bit at a time. This is so lame compared to a pass-through socket. So I'm just holding the socket and then it's like a quarter turn at a time, turning the inside of it with the Allen key to the left. And I'm being nice to these splines on the triple square in there. I'm just not like, I'm making sure it has good grip before I just turn it even just the slightest bit. The only downside to this method is how long it takes. If I had the right tools, it would take one tenth of the time. Hand loose now, bingo. And I can pull this off safely, support the spring a little bit. Boom, boom. I'm just gonna pay attention to how this went. Leave that like that. Then I can slide this off and then pull out. These are called, forget. Now I just need to release the spring. So let's get rid of the OEM spring. Pull the new one over here. You'll see the smaller side. Slides on here. This has a groove it likes to sit on, but before you can even do this part, so this has to go in here. This is the order it slides on. And then let's get this about where it wants to sit, like so. And let's figure out how we're gonna do this part. And this part is easier sit sitting up, just to figure out the best place for these to go, where it won't get stuck. It's easier to put the bolt heads on the bottom. I just did that wrong. that my spring is sitting on the bottom where it should and then I can go ahead that's where it wants to be so then I'm gonna grab that nut start threading it on absolute best case scenario right there see how far I can make it okay, so then we do the opposite game Put this in here and start tightening this will surprise you how fast that will Stop. So now I'm gonna make sure I get my spring this kind of where it needs to be and I'm gonna walk it up That's lined up. This is lined up now. I just need to release these and it will build pressure Now there's a ton of pressure on this one. Let's see bingo bingo first try See, that wasn't so bad. This is ready to go. Psych, you almost did it again. Do not forget to put this plastic piece back on. Remember this? This part's kind of fun. So you got a little tab right here. It's an alignment tool, basically. So I'm gonna go under here, slide it in. It's real obvious what to do. Then I come up here. I slid it in the arm. I'm gonna pull the, the strut spreader set it aside. Now what I want to do is lift up the arm with the jack and then from the top I'm going to thread it in to hold it. Get it close and twist it a little bit. Ooh, it's about there. You'll see we're about lined up. Three volts. 
and hand thread these halfway. Then I can lower it, the bolt will hold it in. Then we can dial it in from the bottom, put everything back. So we're gonna put the fork back in. We're gonna go exact reverse and took everything out. I'm gonna get everything in by hand and then uh, we'll tighten everything all up at once. Let's do the sway bar next. Force that in. That just needs a little love tap. Okay, that's in by hand. I can tighten that later. Let's go ahead and tighten these two. Get comfortable and hang out. Put the reps in. I'm pretty aware that this is backwards, but it's just way easier to get the bolt in this way. And it does, at full droop, tap against this fork, but it doesn't make any noise when you're driving it. And the car was already like this from the previous owner, so. No harm, no foul, I didn't hear nothing. Okay. That's good. Next up, gonna tighten this guy, 18. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna make sure the strut is seated at the bottom. It is, I can see it resting against that lip. You could probably see it too. Bring this on. Ah, cool, that's tight. All right. I had to take a little old trip to the dealership because I stripped the pinch bolt like an idiot. I was impatient, I thought I was in there all the way. Did some damage, new and old. Let's see. From the Audi dealership, Audi Gilbert. What did it cost for this bolt? A whopping $73.82. Just kidding, $7.74, so not a cheap bolt, but I was honestly expecting like 20. Let me learn how to use these things with you right now so we, we don't do this again. I'm gonna figure out what I did wrong. So this goes through here all the way. And then by the nature of the shape of this little divot, the bolt rests like that and that's what holds it in. So I need to make sure I get these through and get this all the way to the end and all the threads are out and then put the nut on. Fun. I could lower it and use the floor jack, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the pole jack. I got this one in, slide it through, put it halfway. Let me get the other one. The other side was so, oh, there we go. Go, go, go. Okay, there we go. So applying force down with both hands and then I'm able to push this all the way through and now I can get the nut on. I learned something I'll never forget. <sighs> Snug. Go ahead and get this situated. Tighten the top strut bolts. Then I'm gonna look for my wire, plug that back into the top, press it in softly, then clip that white piece down, it's really obvious. I'm gonna carefully take the nut, put it up in here. 13 millimeter bolt here. Okay, let's get this back on. That's good. All right, tools, anywhere. No tools here, no tools there, no tools here, no tools. Okay, when I close the hood, everything will be okay. Anything under the car? Nope. All right, let's see if it's any lower. All right, she needs to settle. I can already see how much lower it looks. If I had a little bit bigger tires like they call for, it would be even better fitment. Dang, it looks good from back here. Let you look a little bit closer here. Not bad. If you enjoyed this video found it helpful the best thing you can do is hit the subscribe button head over to karmaspeed.com if you ever need any parts whether it's today or down the road if you haven't seen the video where we do the stage one tune you can click this right here we'll see you over there thanks for stopping by the karmaspeed channel